Look, I've seen you sing along to Hey Jude. I've yeah. caught you a few times. And um, what have you made of the atmosphere on a match day? Klaus, first of all, thanks for, for joining me today. Um, been at the club a while now. We've not had a proper time to, to chat to yourself. So, have you settled in? Uh, good, busy, <laughs> uh, a lot of things to, to get used to, but in general, very good. And uh, how much did you know about Brentford before? Had you ever been to the club before you joined? Uh, yes, I was at a visit when Thomas just became the, the manager. I visited him um, when you were on the other side. Right. Uh, <laughs> and I saw a game, a cup game on Griffin Park. Um, so, yeah. And of course, a lot of Danes, Rasmus Angersen, Benham, connected to Denmark. So, yeah. every Danes know a little <laughs> bit of Brentford, I think. So, you came here, the old portal cabins over there, yeah. and then you started working here. What, what were your first impressions when you came in? It was amazing. Yeah. What I saw on the other side, it also yeah. have some good sides, uh, but this is, uh, this is very good. This is what you need to compete on, on this level, so it's very good. And has anything surprised you since you've come in about the club, about maybe the players, the personnel or, or the culture? Mm, no, in general it's been very easy going, easy with your staff group to get into, easy to get into the, the players. We have a good culture, a good environment, so yeah. It actually surprised me how easy it is to step in in a, in a club like this. So Yeah. yeah. And, and what about the Premier League in general? I, mean, I remember speaking to Thomas and he kind of said, he didn't realise how fast the Premier League can yeah. be. It can be so, 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 then bang, and it's yeah. quick. Yeah. What about yourself? Because obviously you've watched a lot of Premier League football yeah. over, the, over the years, so was there anything for you? Yeah, I'll see the games, but also in training, the intensity and the yeah. tempo. It's, it's amazing, <laughs> yeah. uh, and you have to get used to that. But yeah. it's, a, it's, it's the most impressive thing, I, I think. Obviously, Brian left the club just uh, before Christmas, and you've come in. His remit, it seemed, from the outside was, was very much the defensive side of things. So where do you slot into it with uh, Kevin and, and Justin and Thomas? Uh, pretty much the same role as Brian. Uh, me and Kevin is more in charge of the defensive work, uh, defensive set pieces. Uh, Justin and Thomas more aware of the offensive part. And then we, have, of course, have Bernardo on the offensive set pieces. Very important role as well. But it's not like I only have the defensive and then the other guys don't. Yeah. Uh, look at that. Uh, <laughs> Thomas have his hands on everything, yeah. but in the in the training and in the individual talks and the meetings, I'm responsible that all the details are like we want and the focus are how we want it. And in general, as a person, I'm thinking I'm a little bit more defensive thinking in the, than Thomas is. Right. So if we have a drill on the pitch and we play nine against nine, me and Kevin are most focused on the defensive side, and Justin and Thomas more on the offensive part. And with that, obviously, people will think, well, that means you don't work with Ivan or Brian. But for you, is that still a bigger part? Because surely a lot of the time it's defending from yeah, the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also, we have our IDP players where we go deeper into uh, the, the individual development of, uh, of some players. I have, for example, Michael Damsko, even that he's an offensive player. So it's not like we're just sitting in each yeah. corner <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the, in the room. We are together. Everybody is bringing in. If Justin has something on the defensive, he bring it on the table. We discuss it, but we just need somebody to be aware that all details and all focus are. We are sure that we have this in in every drill. And how do you play it coming into a side halfway through a season? Because a lot of the time when a coach comes in, it's part of a new setup or a yeah. new management team because the team's not doing so well. But we yeah. were doing really well. Yeah. So how do you come in and implement your ideas? Because it must be a tricky one to gauge. Yeah, I think it was easier because we have this preseason because of the World Cup and it's not like I have to come in and change the whole world I have to come in in a rhythm where things were going good yeah. so I need to to step into that and then of course we will develop all of us as a group in the in the in the future and yeah. so is it a case of not going in straight away and going right you need to change this and this because it's already there yeah, and you exactly. can just add to things yeah. longer term. So the most important thing was not to destroy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I want to kind of learn a bit more about yourself. So you mentioned you came to visit uh, to see Thomas before the cup yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Um, when did you first meet Thomas? In 2007. Uh, he was actually my instructor when I did my A license oh, in wow. the Danish FA. And uh, we worked together for one and a half year there when he was my instructor. And after that, um, Thomas was in the uh, um, youth national coach in the, in the FA. And there was a, a job as an assistant coach. And 
I asked him about this job and he said, yeah, I think you should apply for this job. And then we worked together in the Danish FA for two and a half years. And um, then Thomas came to Brøndby and brought me in as an assistant coach as well. So we worked two and a half years in Brøndby as well. Oh, wow. um, and then I would like to try to be a head coach myself. And Thomas was looking for a new project after Brøndby. Uh, so we went to Brentford and I was a head coach in a Danish club for two years. And I have some job as an assistant coach after that. Yeah. And uh, we had contact all the way through this, and we had the idea that we should work together again in the future when the timing was right, and it was the right timing now. Amazing. And what are the similarities and differences between Thomas from back when you met him on your coaching course to, to the one now? Yeah, I think the foundation, the person, the values is the same, but he have more experience, he have more knowledge, he has grown as a leader, so I think he has developed all these skills but the core of Thomas is still uh, yeah. the same. And you also work with Christian Norgaard at international level and, and at Bromby as well. Yeah. How have you seen his progression? And, and did you guys always know he'd be the player that he is today in the Premier League back then? Maybe not that he will be a key player in the Premier Le League, yeah. but because that, that's a high, high level. Uh, but we know that he had something special and we know that he was something special. When he was younger, he was more offensive. So yeah. he's moved oh, a little right. bit more back on the, on the pitch. Uh, and we could see this big potential. Uh, but when we had him in Brunby, he was a little bit unlucky with, uh, with injuries. So he was just on the limit to, to break all the way through. And yeah. when we left, he took the last steps and became a key player for Brunby and was sold to Fiorentina and, and now Brentford. Yeah. But good player, top skills, good personality, good values. So yeah. that's a good foundation. Yeah. And you mentioned there, speaking to, oh, well, you worked with Thomas on your coaching course at 2007. Yeah. I want to talk to you about yourself and kind of how you got into coaching. Yeah. I read online, and I think you're going to correct me here, that <laughs> you'd played, and then you had a, a bike accident and yeah. had to stop playing and went into coaching. Is I think my I stopped uh, playing myself in a young age, but it was not only because of a car accident. <laughs> right. I think my talent as a coach was bigger than as a player. Right. Um, and then my dad was a coach in the best league in Denmark, so I followed him for training, moving around cones, discussing tactics and then I just grew into it and it's always been a part of my life. It's interesting to say that because I think now we're seeing more coaches kind of have a modest playing career and, and yeah. achieving what they did but back then was that still kind of unusual to kind of at a young age being like right I'm a coach not a player here. Yeah maybe yeah I think so. But do you think that was your dad's influence? Yeah it was. It? it always been a big I always have this passion and interest for the game yeah but I think if if it wasn't for my dad I would not have it that big impact on me and and how was that coaching at, at a young age because it's quite a uh, it's quite intimidating getting up and speaking in front of groups of, of players so how yeah. did you find it was it just always natural to you yeah I think so in the beginning it was I was starting with I think under 12 right. and then year for year going on uh, going on older players so I think that's pretty natural yeah yeah and who would you say has been the biggest inspiration? Is it, is it your father, would you say? Or? I think it's different kind, different areas. My dad, of course, in the beginning, uh, there was a head of youth in my youth club, Wiley, when I was there, who was very important for me, who gave me the chance to be a head coach and full-time coach. Thomas has made a big impact when I met him in the education program and, and worked with him. So I think there have been different people and... Also, my, my, my family now, my wife yeah. and my kids, if they didn't support it, it would not be possible. So I think that's also a big influence. Uh, yeah. yeah. When do you think you kind of got in your head the style of play you wanted? And w where did that come from? What would you say it was? I think the inspiration was from the FA. Right. Uh, years ago, I don't remember how many years ago, they started a, a new program in Denmark. Uh, with Kasper Juhlmann, Thomas and these guys, they were implementing um, a new way of playing, a new way of training and I think that inspires a lot of people in that direction uh, and I think the results you see now on the A-national team, that was the beginning of the, of the yeah. journey that started at that time. And all right, in, in Denmark, the, the, the teams that kind of get academy status and all that, it's not on results, it's about the environment and, and things, it's kind of... Just it's more on environment. I also think the results have a little bit of impact, right. but it's not the only impact. It is how your environment is. You get grades for your facilities, for your education, for your programs. So it's a mix of everything. 
Yeah. Also, how easy it is to get to the first team. How many players do you get through to the first team? Gives you an amount of points. So right. Yeah, because I was reading yeah. about that. And it's, it's a bigger perspective. And it's about talent for, it's for, it's for, it's for, it's for everybody, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah. that kind of thing. And I think it's interesting discussing that because Denmark as a nation has always done so well with a relatively small population and it's, yeah. it's achieved so much against big nations. It's obviously won the Euros back in yeah, uh, 92 yeah. and produced some amazing players. And I think now we're seeing the fruits of it with coaches, yourself, Thomas, Casper. Yeah. I mean, that's only naming three. I saw him discussing about how a big thing is also about the team ethic and in Denmark at a young age, you're encouraged about how it's all about the team and less about the individuals. Yeah. Also, I saw him say about kind of this underdog mentality. We can't go into games mm. thinking that we're the underdog so much. We need to think we can be as good as these teams. And yeah. straight away rang similarities to here at Brentford. Do you yeah. think that's what we're seeing throughout the club now, those, the kind of synergy between Denmark and Brentford? Yeah, I think there's a lot of the same values that we are humble, but yeah. we have big expectations and uh, believe in ourselves. Um, so I think that helped us a lot here in Brentford, and I think also, like you said, in the, in the Danish football, it helped a lot. Yeah. Um, I think there's always some. Now we just made it through with Danish coaches. If you go 20 years, it was back. It was Swedish coaches. Yeah. I think we have a good coaching education in Denmark, but also the way of playing, the way of pr progressing the environments, of course, helped. And then it helped that people have success. Yeah. Because if you come out and you fail then the next in line will maybe not have the chance. So Thomas yeah. having a big success and uh, other people having big success in, um, as Danish coaches definitely helps. Well, you can see John Dahl Thomason in, in the championship yeah, exactly. doing a brilliant job with Blackburn. And yeah. the other thing that obviously in Denmark so passionate about their football and as Brentford fans, we're very passionate as well. Yeah. Um, where Thomas and the players kind of have to wait behind while Hey Jude's playing, obviously you go out in front. <laughs> um, Look, I've seen you sing along to Hey Jude. I've yeah. caught you a few times. And um, what have you made of the atmosphere on a match day? I just absolutely love this Hey Jude. <laughs> when the whole G Tech uh, Community Stadium are singing, I think it's amazing. <laughs> and I think it's a part of the preparation for me for the game now, just to have that, to clear my head, and now the game is ready. So I just love this environment. I think we have an incredible good crowd uh, yeah. at home at the stadium. It's so that's something special for me. and. Uh, I just liked it from the first time I heard it. So, and what about yeah. free from desire? Also good because yeah. that means we have won. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. I've not seen you getting involved on the pitch yet, though. Giving a bit of Peter Gillum dancing. No, no. Are we going to see that? I can do it behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> right, I mean, we need to get a song for you, don't we? Yeah. I think yeah. Thomas has got his song. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We need to get a song yeah. um, about our oh, Klaus. <laughs> In the <laughs> middle of our bench. No, nah, yeah. I, I think it's okay that I'm uh, doing yeah. it behind the scenes. All right. Yeah. No, I will no, have no, my sorry. moment with the Hey Jude and then we can <laughs> let all the people do the dancing. <laughs> all right, nice one. We'll leave it there. Cheers for yeah. your time, mate. Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? Yeah. I'm Adam. I'm Gary. And we are Brentford's E Premier League representatives. We've came to the training ground to take on a couple of the players. We've heard they're pretty good, so let's see how we get on. Isn't it? Right, I used to be the best like five years ago. You do the purple one. I'm purple, yeah. 